Welcome to Up On Game presents Taylor Scouting. Coach Randy Taylor is bringing his 40 plus years of knowledge to you. This is Taylor Scouting. And now here's Coach Randy Taylor. Hey folks, this is Coach Taylor with uh, LeVar Arrington's Up On Game Network and uh, Taylor Scouting. And we're here uh, on YouTube. You can find us on the Up On Game Network. Up On Game presents Taylor Scouting. You can get us on iHeartRadio podcast, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I, I am going to be talking to a, a gentleman that I, I, I really like, and he's a smart guy, and we'll introduce him in a minute. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with Elias in the past. He's a smart man. He's an innovative thinker. Uh, and we're going to talk about a couple different things today. We're going to talk about training athletes because the NFL teams are are back in uh, in camp and, and the rookies reported and the others are coming in. And, and uh, Elias has been involved in training a lot of those kind of guys. And then we're going to talk about his new venture called Football Academy. So we've got a couple of things to, to talk about. Um, this is kind of a perfect time to talk about the pro kids, uh, uh, men arriving at camp. And then uh, we'll get to know Elias a little bit better and more talk about Football Academy. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get the two for one show going and uh Bring in Elias Karras. Elias. What's up, Coach? How hey, brother. Glad to have you with me. Hey, uh, I, I think I'm getting all of your uh, background stuff correct, but give us a little brief history of your uh, your path. You, you've been a great trainer for years and years, and, and now uh, we want to talk a little bit about Football Academy as well. Yeah, so I've been in the training industry for 30 years now. Um, started out, you know, out of my car, just hanging flyers on people's mailboxes, and got a couple of clients that way. A couple of years later, one of the one of the clients had a, had a this really good soccer player, but you know, he wasn't Division One material. They said, "Hey, can you work with him?" I said, "Sure." So I started with that kid, and then it just kind of grew from there to some other sports and some other kids, and then next thing you know, I'm training guys for the NFL draft and NBA draft. And it's, it's been a great 30 years. What, what has been your, I always like to find out, you know, people that are in this business and do and have been successful, what their philosophy is of their organization and what their goals are. What, what would you say are your philosophies as that trainer and as that guy working with elite athletes? Um, I think what's given me success over the years is probably my one size doesn't fit all mentality, you know, uh, or you could say there's many ways to skin a cat. I, I, when I was younger, I, you know, learned different methodologies from various folks from all over the country, all over the world. And uh, I would try to make whatever I had learned at that moment, whatever athletes I was working with, I'd switch it up and say, hey, I just learned this. Let's do this. Right. And, and, and what, 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 what dawned on me was, um, you know, you, you got to take maybe a little bit from everyone and come up with your own philosophy, but you can't totally ignore all the different uh, training philosophies that are out there, right? They all work, just some work better for other people, that's all. Um, you know, the human body is a human body, and there's many ways you can get performance out of it. It's just like an engine, right? Just different things you can do to the engine to make it perform get more horsepower and so forth, or be more fuel efficient, whatever it is. So I, my biggest philosophy in the training world was, you know, Hey, you know, let's look at the athlete. What is his needs? What is his medical history? You know, what, what, what are his goals going forward? His age, a lot of different factors. And um, I would just sit back and try to like, I'd listen to them, let them talk. What do they want? What worked for them in the past? What doesn't work? What bothered them? What what hurt them? So I would gather all this and then I would play around with all my experience and all my certificates, certifications and education, et cetera. And I would make it I would tailor it to each person because you can't you can't do one size fits all. Now, I do a lot of group training over the years as well. But again, you have to make adjustments for the individual in that group. 
Yeah. So would you say is, is the, uh, your goals were the athletes goals individually, whatever their goal was, you were trying to get them to that. Absolutely. Are, are there methods you can share with us today? I mean, you talked about the individual and, and how, is there something, some secret sauce that maybe you, you had when you're working with individual players or a story about one of those kids and how you were able to kind of get something out of them? I probably t- the best story I could tell you is of Devin Hester. Okay. Devin Hester ran a four two something at his pro day. Wasn't, I never trained him for it. Right. He returned all those kicks before I got him. I never trained him for it. So when he came in, and he said, hey, I, I, I hear you're the guy in the Chicagoland area. I, I, wanna, I, want, I, want, I wanna work with you. I said, okay, yeah, but I got, you know, I do this thing where my other trainers will warm you up. He's like, no, 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 I wanna work with you. So right then and there, I'm like, okay, why don't we do this? Let's take a step back. And that's, what do you need? What do you want? What's your goal this year? His goal was he wanted to put on five pounds that year. He wanted to return the X amount of kicks. He wanted to make the Pro Bowl. He wanted to – it was, like, real specific goals. He was, he's probably one of the sharpest guys I've ever met uh, and one of probably the nicest guys. People don't realize that about Devin. He's a sweetheart, and, and he's, he's a hard worker, and he's a really sharp kid. He knew, he knew exactly what he wanted. He told me, hey, look, when I used to do this one exercise back in Miami – it really hurt my knees. I, I don't want to do that one. Okay, let's take that one off the list, right? So I, I geared it toward him. I asked him his goals. He gave me his goals. And then I just started trying, hey, why don't you try this exercise, right? This is going to actually strengthen the knee area. You want? Have you ever done it before? No. You want, let's give it a shot. What do you think? Oh, okay, that feels pretty good. So, I mean, that that story with him, like, he, God gifted him with amazing talent an amazing speed. I just wanted to maintain that. There wasn't much I could add to it. Right. He's a, he's going to be a hall of famer. So yeah, just don't screw it up. Right. Exactly. Sometimes that's the formula. Just don't screw it up. Yeah. Hey, Hey, uh, Elias, I, I just want to go through some of your uh, recognitions because I think they're kind of cool. And, and so if you bear with me and I'll try not to embarrass you, but but Elias was honored by the United States Olympic Committee with their Special Recognition Award. Also a recipient of the Distinguished Achievement Award from the International Sports Sciences Association and was also presented with the Professional Recognition Award from the IDEA, Health and Fitness Association. And lastly, Elias Kara served as the Operational Performance Enhancement Specialist to the military special forces personnel, which is probably my favorite thing that you did. And, and so give us a brief overview of how these awards came about and, and what does it take to do some of these things? Yeah, I'll, like I said, I, 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 I went around the country quite a bit and learned from other trainers quite a bit. Um, I became a sponge and I built relationships and networks with coaches and, and trainers and so forth. And then, so that word got around that, you know, if you're in the Midwest, not just Chicago, you know, if you're Milwaukee, Indy, whatever, you got to connect with this. You know, I was fortunate enough that I was the person. So I got to have, you know, Olympians with me. I had, you know, Jason Brown, who's a, a, a bronze medalist in figure skating. I had Asia Evans, who was a bronze medalist in bobsled, who used to be a track girl. And we converted her to 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 um, bobsled. And, um, you know, because of that, I picked up a couple of those Olympic awards um, as the trainer for them. Um, also, with the special forces, um, I great story. You know, I had a, a friend of mine who played football, then became going into the service. Uh, I trained him when he was a football player and he raved about my training to one of his uh, COs and, and basically they, they gave me a call and they said, Hey, we, we, we have this program we're trying to do. Um, a lot of our boys uh, besides uh, ducking shrapnel uh, and, and, and IEDs in Afghanistan. One of the biggest injuries is when these guys get land off, jump out of a plane and they land on that terrain. They're, breaking ankles and blowing out knees and is there anything we can do to kind of maybe you know cut down at least on the sprains and and the, and the twists or get them back faster so um i was fortunate enough they, they flew me up and we went to um, uh butte montana and uh i i never seen athletes like these guys man these guys can 
they don't stop for anything. And it was cool because I was in the back of an ATV and just they're running and I was just coaching them to run and how to, you know, mechanic wise and so forth. Then we did a whole barefoot special to get their ankles and feet stabilizers. It was really cool. I was, I was like, that was to me is one of my biggest honors. That, that would be like uh, being a part of one of these movies scripts, you know what I mean? And, and uh, so when is your movie coming out? Oh, I'd love to have one one day. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Hey, hey, is it harder uh, with these kids to get a get a kid or a, a military guy or an athlete into competition shape or maintain a player's level of fitness for their sport? You know, that's a good question. Um, I honestly think it's to maintain for the fact, especially if they're that at that elite level whether it's special forces or pro athlete, Olympic athlete, um, you know, the, to, to, to have them maintain that or even increase slightly uh, their performance, but keeping them on the field, keeping them on the court, keeping them on the ice, keeping them on the playground, like, you know, the field of combat, like that, that to me is a big challenge because there's so many different factors in there that they go through and the stress they're upon that's, that's on, upon them when they're performing or they're executing an exercise or whatever it is, um, or a mission. Um, I, I honestly I think to me, it's, it's a lot easier to, to, to build somebody from scratch than to try to keep them healthy and maintain because there's so many factors involved in that. You, you uh, have dealt with a lot of kids in this, uh, in this business, uh, can you talk about some of the other folks that you've worked with and maybe some inside scoop of, uh, so we get to learn more. Now you did the Bob sledding and, and Devin Hester, what other type of uh, tools have you used for maintenance or for uh, improvement? So, yeah. So for maintenance and, and, and health, I use a lot of physical therapy uh training modalities, uh, recovery modalities, uh, some chiropractic, um, recovery modalities. There's, there's some cool, cool new toys that are out there. There's always new toys that come out. Um, it's, it's, and, and everything has its purpose. Um, it's just kind of figuring out, okay, let's listen to the doctor first. That's the one thing I've learned is never like, think you're the doc, like the doctor says this, that's what's going to take place. And then there's a, you know, I, I usually work hand in hand with the, the, the team's trainers, athletic trainers, uh, for the fact that when I when they get back, you know, to the to the office, so to speak, you know, you want to get them back better than they came to you. Right. And the only way to do that is to listen to how the trainer, the head trainer and the uh, head and the um, doctor for the team ask you to to to, to hey, these are the protocols we expect you to to execute and, and this is how we expect them to be back at this le- you know we expect them one out of ten he's he's got to be close to a 10 when he comes back to us if not a 10 right right it, you know i every time i talk to somebody in your world and the training or the coaching i i always talk about flexibility because i don't think you can tell people to stretch enough and so how important is that flexibility and stretching and is there any couple of little drills that you love that are kind of full body or can help certain the old athlete or the young athlete? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. So there's some different, um, so there's, there's your, your basic static stretching or, you know, your old school stretch. And then there's this, you know, the dynamic stretching where your movement, you're moving and you're building up your heart rate and doing different movements as, as you go along. Um, there's, there's a great technique. It's called the Egoscue. And it's um, de- designed by Joseph. I think his name's Joseph. But anyway, he, he was using these uh, methods to rehab ballet ballerinas back in the early 1900s. And believe it or not, they still hold true today. There's some really good ways you can use them. Basically, it uses uh, your, your body and gr- naturally with gravity, um, doing some wall stretches and so forth to help realign you and help get you more mobile. So that's then I would say probably, um, you know, having someone stretch you the properly, if they know what they're doing, you see all these new businesses popping up called stretch lab and stretch room and so forth. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that 
it's a great trend going forward that people are starting to really focus in more on flexibility. So the guys that you and girls that you've had that have had success were very good stretchers or worked on flexibility. Is that so, true? To make a great athlete, I think you have to, number one, obviously uh, have flexibility and work on that, right? You have to work on your nutrition. You have to work on your mobility, which is different than flexibility. Mobility is a lot of more movement pattern and it's a lot of rotation and so forth. So you got to work on that. You need to uh, obviously work on your strength, power, and endurance. And you have to try to keep all those at a level of 10. And that's why I say it's a lot harder to achieve that consistency for an athlete as opposed to building somebody from scratch. There's a lot of factors involved in athletic athleticism. Plus genetics play a huge role. Let's not kid ourselves. Genetics does play yeah. a huge role. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I've, I've put on a few pounds. I can still touch my toes. That's probably genetics. There you go. <laughs> so um, is there a certain part of the body that is more important than the other? I mean, ankles, knees, hips, how would no, you? It's, it's all, I mean, obviously I'm going to say, you know, make sure you have a strong and mobile core, but you know, it's from head to toe. And, and a lot of the things that I tell people, it's, it's what you don't see in the mirror that are the most important, right? Your posterior chain from the back of your head, all the way down to your heels. Right. And you want that to be powerful, flexible, explosive, mobile. And that's, and that's what a good strength coach and a good performance coach, a good therapist can, can achieve with his client. That's great. Hey, Elias, tell us about the new venture you're involved with football Academy. Yeah. So as, as I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, we're working on an app right now, but to give you a little quick rundown and history about it. Um, I've been involved in sports for a long time. Majority of my athletes have, have been uh, a good majority of them have been football players um, for the fact that football is the largest team sport and it offers the most scholarships out there. So I tend to tend to generate more followers from football. Um, and as I built this network up, um, I started producing a lot of college football players and then they started becoming pro or they had a shot of cop coffee in, in the pros and then it didn't work out right. NFL, not for long. So, um, a lot of them would turn to coaching and a lot of them, when they're coaches would get the recruiting area where I was at. So they'd come back and say, Hey, who's the next me that I was when I was with you I was the D1 guy right who's the next one in the area and I'd say okay this kid or this kid or hey I heard about a kid down in East St. Louis you got to go check them out and that word spread and then I started meeting more and more coaches and the cool thing is I could say is right now I physically have trained over 11 NFL assistant coaches and over 60 college coaches so that one point there were athletes with me in high school college or the NFL and then they ended up getting to the coaching ranks. And now I could just, they, they spread the word. Hey, you got to call my guy Elias in Chicago. He's got a kid for you. Or, you know, I have coaches from schools I've never heard of before calling me up and saying, Hey, I'm new to Chicago. Can you help me out with the recruiting territory? Cause I have no clue what to do. So I took that and I started working with colleges and I started trying to find out exactly like, is there an app out there you guys use that's perfect for it besides the huddle highlights, is there something that you guys have that you could just punch up some, hey, I need a 6'3 defensive back that runs a 4'6 or better, he has a GPA of 3.8, you know, he's got a full, uh, he's got a great ACT score, et cetera. Is there something you could do to pull that up? And they're like, you know, there's some services out there that have a little of it, but what we really want to know is we want to know, hey, his family background, financial information so we can make sure that, you know, if we have to scholarship them, we do. If not, we can give them a partial. Um, you know, they want to know who's the shot caller in the family. They want to know what other athletic things you could do, but they really want to do is everything on videotape. So when COVID hit and these kids in Chicago weren't allowed to go on any recruiting trips and no, no one was having visits here in Chicago, I started doing videos, combine videos for all the colleges on, the, on these kids that I had. And I started getting kids offers that way. I mean, I have a one kid that, that got three power five offers just from that video. And they had never played a down at varsity tape, never varsity football. So 
what we're doing now is we're trying to get the video component onto an app with all the data that the coaches want. The coaches will get it for free. Obviously, it'll be a subscription based with the families. And if they want to upgrade and get a video done, we're going to be able to do that too. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. On top of that, we run our, we host our events. We partnered up with the Glazier football uh, clinics, coaches clinics, and the U.S. Marines. And what we did is we had the Marines help us run the stations. Uh, the coach at Glazier Coaching Clinic was sponsoring it. So they're giving the kids out water. And we were doing all the testing and the drills and so forth. And then the media came and the college football coaches came out. So we started doing that with them um, for the last couple months uh, before the camp season started. And now we're going to go uh, full circuit in the summer, or I'm sorry, in the after football season's over. So we're going to go from December through May, and we're going to go all over the country doing these camps and clinics. Man, that sounds great. That that uh, you've always been. You you still are that innovator, and and uh, like I said, you're, you're a smart guy and an innovative guy. What's the best way for folks to reach you, Elias? Um, honestly, if they just. Yeah, just Give me a call or text me, 847-687-6005. It's that easy. That easy. And mm -hmm. uh, any social media where you are? Uh, we have the FBA.com. That, that's on there. Uh, what else you could do? My e You could do an email, EKXFIT at yahoo.com. All so right. we're, we're, we're ready. We haven't launched the company name yet for, uh, for the app. So that's why everything's kind of really just quiet right now. Once that comes out, we'll have a new name and a new website and a new, you know, email and so forth. So we're almost there. You are hearing it here first, folks. The uh, wait for uh, Elias Karras to uh, take over the world and another phase of of athletics. Right, brother? You got it. Thank you, Coach. Hey, I mean, we I appreciate go way back. your time, yeah. man. No, you're, you, we go way back and you've been a mentor to me and a good friend. So I appreciate everything. We'll keep in touch and uh, I, I got to wrap it up here with the show, but uh, you take care and, and thanks again. Oh, thank you, Coach. It was my honor. My pleasure. Thank you. You got it, brother. So uh, uh, this is the Up On Game Network. Uh, Up On Game presents on YouTube, Taylor Scouting podcast. Uh, go to Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio podcast, anywhere that you get your podcasts. We do a lot of education on this show. Uh, and really do a great job. And, and the whole Up On Game Network is about educating, and LeVar Arrington's got a great organization going. So join us, uh, follow us. You can follow me at R Taylor FB Scout. That is my Twitter handle. And uh, look forward to reaching out to you guys and talking to you later. But uh, watch for Taylor Scouting on the Up On Game Network, Up On Game Presents. Thanks, folks.